Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And my guest today is John Rayty. John is a doctor and an author. He is a Harvard professor of psychiatry and he is a practicing psychiatrist. And he has a passion for the brain and specifically for how to keep it healthy in, uh, you know, at all ages. So first of all, welcome, John. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be with you. Thank you. I'm really, really thrilled to have you here. Um, one of our key sort of pivots for 60 and Me is healthy aging. <laughs> and of course, that's, you know, the brain, that's the body. It's the whole, the whole thing, the well-being. So I would like to ask you, because uh, you're a psychiatrist, why are you so fascinated with the science of the brain? Well, we began, uh, when I began in, in, in psychiatry, we began to really unpack how psychiatric issues were related to the brain. Uh, and I, uh, in about 10 years in, I became addicted to the brain uh, and uh, brain science. So, and I spent 10 years writing a book called A User's Guide to the Brain. Uh, so I, I and which I tried to uh, make understandable all the stuff that we were learning about the brain as uh, mm -hmm. in, in the 80s and the 90s uh, rolled along. So you so, saw the manifestations of some of the challenges in your psychiatry, and then it was like, how do, why is it doing, like, well, how is it working? Right, right. We were, we were getting, moving from psychoanalysis into more into neuropsychiatry or brain science, mm -hmm. Uh, not just with medicine, but just with our understanding of uh, what the brain was up to and uh, how this related to our uh, clinical presentations mm -hmm. and, uh, like you mentioned, the sense of well-being and uh, all that. Well, it's kind of a holistic, um, you know, thing to think about because I mean, women, our community, 60 and Me, is women over 60, 50 to 70, 80. And we are, there's, we have quite a lot of women in different countries. So we're all at different places in this kind of journey of aging. But one thing that we all think about, of course, in your 60s is your, is like living a healthy life as long as you can. And Alzheimer's, dementia, brain related illness and depression are like big issues for us. So I know you've written, I mean, I've written eight books, 14 languages, you're, you know, you're all over the place and you've got a book called Spark, which I'd like to ask you about because that is, I think, is where you start to develop a connection between exercise and brain health. And can you share right. that with us? Yes. Well, it, it starts much earlier than that, uh, really uh, with our attention deficit disorder books uh, back in the 80s and 90s when we began to write about that, we, uh, one of our major um, recommendations for uh, your full-on uh, way of making your attention system better was was exercise was one of them, uh, one of the major ones. And uh, so that, that was a prelim. And, uh, but then I began to really follow exercise in the brain and began to speak about it in the no uh, late 90s. And then uh, discovered th th that this was real and uh, we had known about it for some time, but people weren't really aware of it. And so I uh, discovered this school in Naperville, Illinois, which had a, an amazing uh, uh, way of looking at uh, mm -hmm. exercise and, and fitness for their kids. And they had some of the highest performing kids in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and this led me to write Spark. And in that, I looked into all middle school. We read, we, uh, I read a thousand papers. Uh, wow. And, 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 <laughs> wow. And, yeah, yeah. So and, little, just and, a little yeah. bit of research. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is what I love, by, by the way, about your book, because I mean, you're not just like airy fairy, fluffy stuff. I mean, you're actually connecting research. But go ahead and with the papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that point, in in, in the mid to two thousand, um, most of the work had been done on aging, mm -hmm. uh, because we knew that uh, exercise was a good way to prevent cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Right. And there are many, many studies looking at this all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was a major driver, but then it got into how this promotes education possibilities in all ages, and especially the kids. 
um, and as well as treating depression, treating anxiety, treating attention problems, mm -hmm. treating treating the addictions, and so forth. So um, I became just completely fascinated with the the, the topic. Well, I mean, there's this, there's a um, a belief that the aging brain doesn't it isn't changeable. That you know, you, so it's all downhill from your fifties, right? And um, can you maybe talk a little bit about how that isn't the case? Because I can hear little voices in the my, back of my head saying, "Oh, exercise! You've got to be joking!" Like I'm sixty five, and I am like, I'm over that, you know. So tell us what, <laughs> what you know, seriously. I mean, who, I know, I who know. wants to start exercising when you've made it to sixty? And it's like, oh my gosh. But but why is that important? Well, but six is just beginning. Come Thank on. You. Come Thank on, you. Come on. Please. Please. No, but you, no. I'm just I'm just doing the stereotypes. No, 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 I understand. <laughs> I understand. But no, we we uh, you know, believe me, most of the big studies early on were all about people in average age 69, mm -hmm. average mm -hmm. age 65 uh, showing remarkable changes in their brain. Um, changes of brain growth rather than brain erosion, uh, and as well as improved cognitive abilities, as well as, especially for women. And in my aging chapter, I talk a lot about. I have a whole chapter in my book on women, um, Thank you. because because there are so much so much that we know about, especially postmenopausal, that the, that exercise is a way to prevent. Uh, erosion of the brain and cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease and all the other problems that uh, we face as we age. Uh, yeah. But there are many, many, many studies uh, looking at this and showing that women uh, improve about 10 to 15 percent on their cognitive scores as well as their their brains grow. And uh, we know this now and we've uh, unpacked it to, to a T. And of course, that relates also to things like stress and um, social isolation and depression, which are things that happen to women in their 60s, you know, because husbands are passing and, you know, uh, they've, well, the children are leaving home, all the transitional things are happening in your 60s. So you need all your resilience, you know, to kind of cope with that sometimes. So t tell us a little bit about the, the types of exercise you're talking about, though. I mean, are, are you talking like doing a, a couple of miles a day or 10,000 steps or <laughs> what, what's the optimal combination? Well, I wish there were an optimal. I mean, everything works. Uh, mm -hmm. Yoga, Tai Chi, uh, and as you mentioned, aerobic uh, training, running, biking, mm -hmm. swimming, climbing, all those things uh, you can begin with. And, right. and Zumba. And having and, and and you mentioned a very critical element, which is the social connection. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working with another group out of Stanford and Silicon Valley that are looking at aging, using exercise and making small tribes, uh, social mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. uh, to prevent uh, comorbidity or or uh, illness yeah. as as we age, and working specifically with people who uh, are over 66 and uh, seeing that that this business, I mean, what you mentioned is very, very important. The isolation is, is huge. And if you combine that with exercise, you have a, a big, big bonus. And especially if it's done outside, um, you know, that there, there's nothing better than uh than than doing that getting into nature well you know 60 and me is 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 one of many communities now that are forming for older older people older women and i think that we're beginning to realize that you know we're not on this journey alone and if we can somehow connect at the levels that also add value like like you say exercise go with friends to the gym or, or go on a walk with someone and in fact i went out by the way you'll be happy to know i did my ten thousand steps today because i know you say that you should do this the exercise Exercise before a stressful activity, or no, it's not, <laughs> not that this is stressful, but you know that right. if you walk and, and exercise before you have to deal with you know something, it's 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 good for you. So I think yes. that's. Can you talk a bit about that? Because that's kind of, if you're going for a job interview or you want to feel confident, you know, strong. Well, think about what exercise does. I mean, it, psychologically, it, mm -hmm. it makes you feel good. Uh, it, it it boosts your mood. It boosts your self confidence because you've done it for today, yeah. uh, like you did. I know. I'm okay. so proud of myself. <laughs> yes. 
yes, yes, yes. Well, that's it. You motivated it. me. And, and you've also, by the way, changed your chemistry in your brain, which you probably aren't aware of. Didn't uh, notice because that. we don't we don't feel like the norepinephrine and dopamine increase, but we see it because our attention is that much better. Mm-hmm. And 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 our motivation is that much higher. Uh, so it's I always say a bout of exercise, no matter what age, is like taking a little bit of Ritalin and a little bit of Prozac, <laughs> which means you you boost those same chemicals that those psychiatric drugs do, so that we, your attention is a little better, your retention is much better, and your mood is a lot brighter, uh, so that you're ready. Yeah, so that, that actually does approach uh, or touch on another topic of depression. And I remember reading when I was looking at your, I haven't read your book, by the way, Spark, um, but you talk about how, um, how it helps with depression. I mean, how exercise is better than taking any medication. It's equal to the benefit of a, of a pill, of a drug. Right, right. But it also doesn't have side effects except, except wonderful physical side effects. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. That that uh, and talk about is that exercise really is mainly for the brain, and the the side effects are the physical positives in terms of blood pressure, in terms of heart health, in terms of brain health, in terms of uh, overall physical health of your body, and it keeps you going. Um, <clears throat> and believe me, one can start in their in middle age, and I have a whole series of slides showing this. Uh, that uh, people who start and stay with it and living into their 90s and 100s um, and, and living well, not just living, I, I not think just I'm, making. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, because it, 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 and I, I talk uh, to the positive psychology class at uh, the University of Pennsylvania uh, every year and talk about well-being. And well-being is definitely where exercise puts you. Mm-hmm. In a state of well-being, and then and then if you add that to a, sp- a spinning class or to a walking group or to a Zumba class, mm-hmm. uh, you get or yoga. Or you know, people are mm-hmm. really doing yoga a lot more. Ten percent yep. of the U.S. are doing one one episode of yoga a week, which is great. Ten percent. Uh, yeah, ten percent. Wow, that's it. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it, it's, it's stunning. Yeah, no, we we actually we have a yoga product. I mean, when we started Sixty and Me, we didn't know what we would be people would want, but it turned out that everybody was very interested in yoga. So we did a gentle yoga and a chair yoga, because there yes. are people with mobility issues, and it's but it's still really hard. If you've ever done a chair yoga class, it's not simple. Or it's not it's exercise. It works. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, and you get your brain going, and now yeah, we're getting re- real, real studies not just from india like we did in the uh, in the past uh, where they obviously it seemed like they had a uh, uh, you know a, a reason for getting those positive results but now we're getting real uh, seeing the using all of our techniques of uh, brain imaging and all that and different measures and such and and seeing exercise is a very powerful way to uh, or, or yoga exercises mm-hmm. mm-hmm. very powerful way to raise the same chemicals and and bring about some of the similar changes that uh, uh, aerobic exercise or weightlifting or mm-hmm. uh, you know all those things uh, bring about. You also mentioned um, before we started about meditation, and that you know that's you wouldn't think of meditation being a benefit if you if you're putting the focus on exercise. Can you talk a bit about that? Well, think about what med- meditation does. I mean, what 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 the what what I talk about a lot in in my books these days is that uh, exercise uses more brain cells than in any other human activity. And in meditation, people think, "Oh, you're clearing your your brain." Brain. Well, you are actually turning your brain on in a very uh, mm-hmm. dramatic way with meditation. Um, and you're focusing, and you're you're getting your your different uh, networks to work better together, mm-hmm. and uh, and then there's a lot of information coming out just in the past four or five years uh, that I'm learning about and excited about about mm-hmm. how both exercise and meditation help 
or the various networks get aligned more. Uh, and, and as we age, too, by the way, this is an important area. Yeah. Because one of the things that happens as we age is we, uh, we get uh, our, our networks uh, get discombobulated mm-hmm. a little bit. So, and, and we end up into what's called the default mode network where we're sort of in a daydream or thinking only about ourselves mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. thinking about mm-hmm. uh, things that we haven't done or, or mm-hmm. getting anxious and depressed. So, you know, and, and so we have to get out of that. So it's very exciting time, by the way, very I, exciting. And I, I'm so glad there are people like you who have the passion about it to be able to write about it and share. Now, I wanted to make sure we mentioned to people that you do have a very active Facebook page where you, uh, you know, you promote or you publish articles on new discoveries, new things you're doing, in addition to the books that you're probably still uh, refining and working on. So it's, um, it's John Ratey, M.D., that's the Correct. Facebook page. The, yeah, the, the yeah. Facebook page, yes. And, and each day I have a wonderful uh, assistant who, who is in the social media uh, from MIT, by the way. That's and uh, she finds these articles all over the world, but yeah. very relevant articles in uh, exercise, meditation, uh, being outside, yeah. various, uh, various health-promoting kinds of things, but mainly focused on how this then impacts our brains. Yeah. No, I, and I'm not surprised that it's so popular, that there's so many people thinking about it now, because, I mean, the boomer community, the women and men over, over 55 are just a huge part of society right now, and we're around for another 30, 40 years. We're not, you know, we're not going anywhere. And so it's, it's super important. But, um, but your website is johnraty.com, and that's where you've got your, your books. Now, just be, you've got Spark. Where would, let me let me ask. Which book would you suggest people start with? Because you've got eight books. Uh, I, uh, yes, I, I actually have eleven books. But eleven. Uh, wow. uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, Spark, I would I would start with Spark, and then I would look at at my newest book called Go Wild, which which incorporates um, uh, how we should be living as hunter gatherers whose, whose genes we still have. Right, we're still hunter gatherers by our genetic prescription. Okay, well, we're going to talk about that in another video. So, I, okay. I, I'm, and I'm excited about that because I I agree with you one thousand percent. And I just I have lots of good questions for you there too. But I guess the last question for you is: How do people get motivated? What 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 can we say to these women that are watching the video, everyone, uh, to get out there to get out and exercise? Well, it, what one is, and this this is the I think the way I recommend people to to do it is to learn about it, learn about the benefits, learn about how it changes things, learn about how it makes you less depressed, more, less anxious, less stressed, more lovable, yes. uh, because <laughs> you, you increase that oxytocin, yeah. uh, and more uh, connected to the universe and to the, each other. And, uh, and it really does work. So uh this is this is why i think the book spark is the first step for people because it it shows what is possible and 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 you can do it yourself by just getting outside and walking or uh, running or joining a tai chi class you know i mean it's it's amazing well, that, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful way to close, I think, to just remind people that the best gift you can give yourself as, a, as an older person, as a senior, if you want to use that word, is, is to actually take, go and do something that's completely free. There's no ex, not excuse, but oh, there's no reason absolutely. not to do it. Just, and, and if you take a look at your book and look at the chapters that you've mentioned on aging, especially women, it's, it's not just someone's made it up now. I mean, you are an expert in this field. You've been researching it for years, and you've got the evidence now to show. So I'm... Very, very happy to have met you and, and uh, been inspired by your, by your work. So, Well, thank you. Thank you I'm very glad. much. Yeah, thank you, John. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our 60 and Me YouTube channel and also visit our website. We are a strong and dynamic community of women over 60. We're challenging aging stereotypes and every day we share fascinating stories, interesting questions and great conversation.